Hi everyone, I'm Danny and I'm a consultant here at The Profs, helping with engineering and science uh, admissions applications for top universities in the UK, such as Oxbridge and Imperial. We'll be talking about how to get into Cambridge for engineering, what goes into preparing for this, as well as applying to the university itself, and how to make yourself as strong a candidate as possible. Let's start with some of the facts first. Typically, Cambridge Engineering requires two A stars and an A to be admitted onto the course. You can be asked for higher grades than that, but a standard, standard entry requirement is two A stars and A. So you might notice these are really high grades that so only a small proportion of the UK or people from other, other countries will be able to obtain. So because of this, you have to do really well in your A-levels, AS especially, because that's what you will be applying with when um, applying to Cambridge. And you need to make a good impression based on the sets of grades that you've achieved so far in your secondary uh, education, as well as your uh, A-level studies. So what this means is that Cambridge tend to focus a lot on your predicted grades and also track record. Unlike Oxford, which places quite high emphasis on GCSEs, Cambridge tends to focus on what your AS grades were if you did take some external examinations, but if you took some internal examinations with your school, then the predicted grades from your teachers from these, from these AS exams will be held quite highly. So unlike GCSEs, AS, AS grades and mock exam grades, which form the basis of predicted grades, tend to form the backbone of what, what they'd make admissions decisions on. So you want to make sure your predicted grades for Cambridge are as high as possible. And why, why is that important? Why can't we just get the two A stars and an A predicted from this? Well, universities know that a lot of students actually tend to miss their predicted grades. So a student could be predicted, let's say three A stars, and they might only end up getting the A star on one of the, one of the subjects and then A's on the other two. And so because they know you tend to miss these uh, grades, it makes sense to be predicted these higher grades because as a fallback plan, you can, uh, if you were predicted four A stars, for example, you might end up getting two A stars, two A's. You then still meet the minimum conditions when, you, when you're there on your A-level results day. Whereas if you're predicted or uh, might just scrape a two A stars and an A on the results day, maybe you get an AAA and therefore won't be admitted onto the course unless maybe there are some other circumstances at play. So you want to make sure your predicted grades are as high as possible so that you allow for that little bit of wiggle room in case you don't actually make those grades, but you're pretty confident that you could get the two A stars and an A. We also have personal statements that are involved in applying to Cambridge. So with any UCAS application, you have to write a personal statement. This has been changed in recent years. So it's just a statement of intent or answering a few questions about your interests and what makes you the right candidate for uh, for the university. So in previous years, this used to be an actual 4,000 character essay, so to speak, whereas now you get asked a few questions, which I'm still calling the personal statement, but these will just be asking you what, your, uh, what you like about a course while you're applying for a certain course, and, uh, and also uh, the rest of the application involves submitting any previous grades in history. So the personal statement is a good way to show what parts of engineering in this case we like, or you like, I should say, and also what part, what you're trying to get out of a university degree, because ultimately not everyone wants to go to university. So you want to also show why you'd make a good engineering student at university. You want to prove that you have the right enthusiasm and aptitude from this. So you want to say how the things that you've learned so far will prepare you for university, and also why you actually enjoy uh, engineering because they don't want you to get to university. You, you thought, oh, I'm really just good at maths and physics, and then you end up really hating the course and then you drop out. So if Cambridge were to decide between two candidates, then the personal statement would form the least important part of the four things to consider uh, mentioned earlier. So it's not the be all and end all of these decisions. You, you still should focus on it in some, in some form and spend some time on answering these personal statement questions quite well but you should focus more of your time 
and attention to the other aspects, such as the predicted grades, the admissions tests, and also the interview itself. So once you submit your personal statement to Cambridge, you will then be asked to fill out an SAQ. So this is a supplementary questionnaire that the university asks for, and this involves filling out details about any uh, specific grade scores. So it, it could be a breakdown of what scores you got in, in any modules. Well, not modules anymore, but the, uh, the, the certain papers that you sat in uh, in the summer, as well as uh, any information that you weren't able to feature on your personal statement. So they usually add an extra 1,000 characters that you're able to mention some other bits about why specifically you're applying to Cambridge, what things that you might have read or looked into that support or supplement this application, and just any other things that you feel would be important to mention that you just didn't have enough space to write down on the personal statement questions. Once you've submitted these uh, personal statement and uh, SAQs, you'll then be writing the, uh, the admissions test known as the ESAT, Cambridge Engineering. So on the ESAT video, we go through what specifically you need to do to prepare the ESAT. But in short, you need to just make sure that you do lots of the previous papers, so specimen and the most recent ones, to get used to the format of the paper and try and do this in good time so that you're able to sort out any, any topics or bits of content you might struggle with or just improve your general problem solving. If you do relatively well on the ESAT, you'll then be called to an interview for Cambridge. This will typically be about a month after you've sat the ESAT. So these interviews are typically uh, two interviews at the college that you pick. You can pick to do an open application some people worry that uh, an open application might disadvantage them, but the, the official statement from Cambridge and from having attended it, I can tell you that the admissions decisions do not weigh someone with an open application any less than someone who applies directly to a college. So if you, let's say, put an open application and then you were then, uh, you were then put into Magdalen College, for example, Maudlin would not see you as any less of a candidate or any less enthusiastic about going to Cambridge. It just means that you didn't have a preference for what college you wanted to attend at Cambridge. And that's all that it is. So if you are stressed about picking a certain college, then don't worry about this too much. You can choose based on what things you, you care about, maybe location, how close it is to lectures and, and any certain shops, uh, as well as any specific uh, content or any specific supervisors that might be based at that college that you might want to make contact with. But because a lot of these things aren't guaranteed, it's also worth noting that an open application helps to give you some flexibility there where they can put you into a, a college which has fewer applications compared to some other ones. And then you're just competing against fewer candidates in that college. Because Cambridge operates on a pooling system, Applying, uh, applying for a certain college on the basis of stats is not really that helpful. So some people might see one college and say, oh, 20% of people get admitted here, and another college, 10% of people get admitted here. Because Cambridge operates a pooling system, any candidates at a, uh, either tougher, a tougher or more oversubscribed college can be put into a pool where other admissions tutors at the other the other colleges can look at these and compare those to the candidates that they interviewed. So because of this pooling system, it makes sure that the, the right candidates, or it tries to make sure that the right candidates are admitted overall to the uni and you're not disadvantaged just based on the college that you applied for. So if you're oversubscribed at one college, you might actually end up finding yourself being placed at another college that you actually did not interview for because you were a better candidate or they deemed you to be a better candidate than some of the ones that they, they interviewed. So do not worry too much about which college to apply to specifically. You can try and be a bit tactical, as I know many people are. So if you, if you know an uh, undersubscribed college, it might be easier to make an impression with because there's fewer people to pick from, then you could do that. But ultimately, they do try and control for, for these things. So whether you want to spend time thinking tactically about this, that's up to you. But I would recommend just focusing on making yourself as good a candidate in the things that matter such as the admissions test and doing well 
at the interview itself. When you're called up to the, inter the interview, you'll get two interviews typically, maybe a third one, and then these will talk about things such as personal statements, possibly, again, not really a big focus for a lot of colleges, but some do tend to ask you about uh, what you're enthusiastic about, what you wrote on your personal statement, but generally it will be very technical content on these interviews. So you want to make sure that you focus on learning as much of your A-level content uh, as thoroughly as possible and doing really well on these interviews through, uh, through showing that level of understanding that they, that they need for, uh, for candidates getting onto the, the course. So what you can see when applying for Cambridge through the ESAT and the interviews is the ESAT essentially tells them that you've got a minimum level of competency because they tend to interview about 75 to 80% of people who, who do the ESAT. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you've done really well on the ESAT to get an interview. It just means that you've possibly passed their minimum threshold or, uh, or you've shown that at the very minimum you're competent as a student. And then the interview is where they, uh, they select from the large pool of the available candidates to think these are the people that we're going to give an offer. So the, the ESAT and the interview, as well as predicted grades, these are the main things to focus on when applying for Cambridge Engineering. And acing each one of these bits uh, individually. These have been focused in other videos in terms of how to ace the ESAT and how to ace Cambridge uh, Engineering. So uh, with all that being said, focusing on making yourself as strong a candidate as possible involves just maximizing uh, your profile on all these on all these fronts but specifically try to make sure you get as high score on the ESAT and then being very calm and composed as well as showing showing off your knowledge on the uh, on the Cambridge interview this will put you in a good position to possibly get an offer from Cambridge we should also mention that it's it can be very dependent on the day how how well you do so it's a, it's a good thing to not stress when it comes to things like the ESAT and interview, because just trying to do your best uh, and not worrying about factors outside of your control are, uh, are the most important. So the most important things to worry about are not being stressed, just trying to do as best as you can and not really worrying about the end result, because ultimately they just want to see that people can perform well, that you understand your content very well and that you just genuine, genuinely enjoy problem solving. So worrying about trying to be uh, trying to get perfect marks on the ESAT or trying to answer every question absolutely perfectly on the interview will not serve you well. Try to just make sure that you understand uh, things that you've learned as well as you can, that you enjoy solving problems because you're going to be doing a lot of it on the undergraduate course. And then just trying to display that and bring that across to the, to the interviewers at the end of the day. So that is how to get into Cambridge for engineering. So thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, then feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And also feel free to share this video with any of your friends that you think might also find it useful. If you have any questions about the video or the general admissions process, then drop a, a question in the comments below and we'll aim to respond. If you feel like you could benefit from the support of an admissions consultant like myself when applying to Cambridge for engineering, or the, the general Cambridge application process, then feel free to contact the profs on the information provided on screen right now. And as always, best of luck in your preparation and application for Cambridge Engineering.